We are in for a wild visit, if you can only see what's going on over here. <laughs> Three of our next guests are absolutely amazing creatures. Right, then there's Kip Smith. <laughs> <laughs> Kip, welcome, welcome to the Morning Plan. What Kip. a way to welcome you, right? Yeah, that's like right. a good criticism yeah, to start the interview. Thanks for joining us. Uh, first, tell us about wildlife encounters. You guys have had this for a number of years. Yeah. Uh, yes, we've been doing this about 20 years. Uh -huh. uh, wildlife Encounters is a nonprofit 501c3 wildlife refuge in Gretna, with our uh, main goal being educating the public about our natural world. Yeah, where do these animals come from? We're going to look at some pictures here. I know you use these um, guys as ambassadors. Yes, we call them our animal ambassadors. Mm -hmm. Each animal has its own story. Uh, each one kind of comes from a different place. Mainly, they're going to be coming from uh, other zoos or refuges, whether they're unable to take care of them. Uh -huh. uh, and some animals actually even come from as uh, people's pets that they were wow. not supposed to have. And we right. actually brought one of those today. Well, uh, I want to first get to the lemur. Let's um, bring him in. Yeah. This guy, Kip. This is his. This is Kip's dad, Kip. <laughs> so this is a lemur. Oh, and I get some grapes here. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> it's a he says, I want that great. Hey, <laughs> this guy's got it's some serious great. moves. He you does, want this he, one? He Tell us about the lemur. Uh, this is a ringtail hey. lemur. Uh, these guys are only it's found good. in Madagascar. That's uh -huh. the only place lemurs are found. Right. And uh, what's happening is these are actually an endangered species right now. Uh, in Madagascar, we're seeing a lot of deforestation. Right. Can They're I actually so you can hear tearing him? down trees. Yeah. And these, play these animals don't have a place to live anymore. So they're slowly <laughs> dying oh. off. Animals gone wild. <laughs> what well, animals are tearing? <laughs> I'm him a great bear. So was he a, was he a pet? Um, no, he actually came from another zoo. Take okay. my grape and don't come back. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get him over here. Holy cow! Um, so now he's eating a banana. He just yes. lost fruit. Wow. Yeah, these Ooh, guys. That was an experience. These guys <laughs> love fruit. <laughs> great, well, look, look, she looks great, doesn't she? It's not going to get any better. Don't worry about fixing it. <laughs> but yes, he actually came from a zoo. Uh, when we got him, he was actually very, very sick, and he uh, was actually having pro problems growing. Uh -huh. Uh, so we had to actually bottle feed him until quite a, wow. quite some time. Did he bite you when you bottle feed him? <laughs> no. <laughs> he probably, they have a really good sense of smell. So he probably had that grape, that grape juice on there. So he probably thought it was a grape. Yeah. He probably wow. kind of bit you. My hand uh, looks like a grape now. <laughs> <laughs> he is amazing. He's got some serious he is, strength. He is yeah, hey, they, who are we going to see next? We've got two so other fast. animals that I'd oh. love for you to meet. So I'm going to move it along. Yeah, we can put him back. The next is a kinkajou. Is that right? Yes, a kinkajou. Okay. I'm going to. And. Hi, buddy. <laughs> Just like holding on for dear life. Thanks, Kip. <laughs> so this, this is a kinkajou, and the first time I heard of this animal was when an, an actress, a reality star, had one of these as a pet. Yes, uh, Paris Hilton. Yes, yes, I didn't want to go there, but right. So tell yeah. us about it. Uh, this is Sebastian. He's uh -huh. a kinkajou. Uh -huh. uh, most people mistake these for monkeys. They're brown. They live in the rainforest. They eat yeah. bananas. So people think they're naturally a monkey. What's the difference? But they're actually they're in the Prasinidae family, which okay. means they're actually a close relative of the raccoon. And it almost look how their 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 fur. It's, it looks like you shaved it almost. That's natural, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's so really sweet. short, but it's actually very dense. These guys have the nickname the honey bear, uh -huh. and the reason for that is because they'll jump onto a beehive and they lick the honey out of the beehive. The bees come out, try to sting him, but his fur is so thick that the bees they actually can't, can't sting him. And you guys can pet him. Fur. Yeah. Wow. And they actually can't penetrate his fur. That's so that's, remarkable. That's their natural defense that is very against thick. predators. Yeah, and they very can, thick. another thing they can actually do is hang upside down by their tail. Oh, look at this. And that's the way that they actually hang upside down in trees uh -huh. in the rainforest. And they'll eat fruit this way. And he doesn't even need his feet. They can just use their tail. Wow. What called, are they indigenous to, to what region? Uh, South America and mm -hmm. Central America. They're going to be a strictly a rainforest animal. Yeah. So you're going to see these in the canopies of the rainforest. So no pets, right? No, like, they this make is terrible the sort of pets. Thing where you say, yeah, they're cute, why are they but terrible don't pets? Do that. He looks really cute here right now. Uh, that's because they're nocturnal. We actually woke him up to come uh -huh. here. Right. Uh, but at nighttime, he's extremely hyper. He's jumping from tree to tree and running around, and they actually make a really high pitched noise. Uh -huh. And you would never get any sleep. Where if do you, you guys? One of these. Where do you keep him out there? Oh, uh, we actually have a separate facility where the animals are at. It's yeah. hard for me to believe that he's more high energy than that lemur that was just <laughs> out here. Well, the lemur is always hyper. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, those guys never that's calm down. Remarkable. He's, yeah, but at nighttime, this guy, he's going to wake awaken up, and he's going to be jumping around, and yeah, you do not want one of these in the house. Oh, they tear down your curtains, be on your ceiling fan, it would make a terrible pet. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice yeah. visual. Yeah, and you have a lot of ambassadors. I was on your website, yes. said you have a cobra. Do you guys still have that cobra? Oh, uh, we don't have the cobra anymore. Okay. No. You got a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, we have, we have around about 50 or 60 different animal ambassadors That's incredible. that we work with. All right, you brought one more with you today, yes. so if we can move the kinkajou out. This next cat... And this is, is a, amazing. Yeah, this is uh, Aries. He's an African serval. This is yeah. actually one that someone had a pet here in Omaha. Oh, You're my kidding. gosh. Uh, he got loose, was running around downtown Omaha, and the Nebraska Humane Society captured him and wow. gave him to us since we had the proper licenses to have this cat. To have him. Wow, she's now, gorgeous. 
They, uh, most people mistake these for cheetahs. They look very similar. They, they actually do. are from Africa, the same area as cheetahs. Uh -huh. uh, cheetahs are the fastest land animal. Uh -huh. These guys are right behind the cheetah. They're just a little slower because their claws are so, retractable. So, so what's their you, top speed? Yeah. Uh, they're going to be about going 50 or 40 to 50 miles per hour. But wow. they're actually known for their jumping. These guys are extremely athletic. They can jump about 10 to 12 feet high in the air. And wow. that's how they catch their, their prey. They actually jump in the air. They hit a bird with their paw. It breaks the bird's back or neck. The bird falls to the ground, and then they eat it. Oh, well, they're strong. So, strong yeah, animals. They're extremely yeah. strong, yeah. They don't look wow. like it, uh, but they're actually very strong. You see his back legs are... <laughs> He's just going for the pocket. <laughs> yeah, he knows where the meat is. Yeah, yeah, you see those cheetahs, though, and those cheetahs are strong looking. This is a yes. thinner animal. They are thinner. They're not going to be as fast, but mm -hmm. they want to be lighter weight so they can jump high. And that's the purpose of their body shape. And, and, and Africa, can you talk about sort of where they come from, how, how their population strength is? Um, this is, we have two different types of servals. This serval is not threatened or anything right now, but yeah. they also have a Barbary serval, which uh -huh. is actually an endangered species. How, uh, how important is it that you're using animals like this to talk about preservation? I think it's extremely important. When we go to schools, kids mm -hmm. actually feel a more personal connection with yeah. the animals. Right. Just like today, that. if we talk about lemurs now, after you guys have already right. kind of had a I close feel, encounter. I feel really personal <laughs> now. I feel like we know each other. <laughs> Right. It, it kind of gives them a closer connection. And one thing we like to strive for kids to learn about is uh, pick up books and mm. read about animals. Right. So after we bring these animals to schools, talk about them, it kind of encourages kids to pick up a book and read about that animal, whether it's this specific animal, the rainforest, the desert, whatever yeah. it may be. So, and so you have a lot of summer camps for kids so they can see this up close. Yeah. And it's, uh, I mean, so let's talk about when, when those yes. are available. Oh, we're actually doing a summer camp this summer. Kids can come out. It's uh, all, a lot of hands-on activities. They're going to learn all about animals, our natural world, wildlife conservation. Mm -hmm. and they actually get some real-world experience on how to work with different types of animals. Wow. And for different ages? Um, yeah, we have a two different camps. We have an mm -hmm. animal adventure camp, which is for 7 to 10-year-olds, mm -hmm. and an animal career camp, which is for 11 to 14-year-olds. And the career camp is going to focus actually on careers. We have uh, herpetologists coming out, veterinarians. They're going to try different uh, kind of topics that they would actually be, yeah. that they would see in the animal career field. What, what do parents need to do to get their kids signed up? Uh, they can go to our website at wildlifeencounters.org, mm -hmm. and we have our brochures and registration forms on there. And in the meantime, you're going to be at, what, Kids Explore? You're going to be at the yes. home show? Yes. Uh, this Saturday, Sunday, we'll be at Kids Explore. We'll have mm -hmm. some of the animals with us. People can come actually interact with them. Mm -hmm. And then uh, March 3rd through the uh, 6th, we'll be at the home show. Uh -huh. And we've been doing that for about eight, nine years. Uh -huh. And one thing we do there is we actually bring a few hundred books, and we actually give a book out to each child that yeah. is an animal-themed book to try to help encourage reading. Wow, That's they are amazing. Can we so yeah, we can amazing. actually show you guys how he jumps. <laughs> <laughs> they, he, he can jump about, uh, right now it's a little low here, yeah. but he'll be able to jump about four Holy or five feet. Holy cow! <laughs> <laughs> we, have yeah. some, we have some lights. That, yeah, yeah, he, oh can, he knows that there's, far, yeah. that he's not oh going to jump gosh. full capability, but we've actually seen him. His enclosure is about 20 feet tall. Yeah. He jumps in the air and he hits birds and eats them. That's amazing. So, yeah. That is, <laughs> yeah, these is amazing. creatures are something else. Kip, Kip, the rest of the crew, thank you so much for being here. <laughs> it has been an experience. Oh, You're welcome you. back anytime, at, yeah, least, from, at least from where I sit. Mike might feel differently <laughs> about that poor lemur. Wow, that's where you can find them online one more time. It's wildlifeencounters.org. There are the phone numbers if you're interested in enrolling your kids in either of those camps that we just talked about. You're going to find wildlife encounters in person in Gretna, Nebraska. So neat to think Which you're right now. Which one drinks water? The lemur drinks the water. Oh, yeah, he'll drink water. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, we'll <leave laughs> he might break your mug, right though. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming. We appreciate it. <laughs> Guests in the Morning Blend start their day with coffee from Pears Gourmet, the official coffee of the Morning Blend. To learn more about Pears, just go to Omaha morningblend.com and click on the Pears logo right on the home page. <laughs> well, how farmers in Nebraska and Iowa are supporting those in Ghana, Africa. Yeah, the group is called Tractors for Peace, and you'll meet the people behind it next.